Welcome once again to our uh, weekly video blog. My name is David Banks. And today, this week, we're going to talk about practice, practice, practice. Now, I hope you're enjoying the blogs we're doing. I hope you're uh, getting some benefit from them. Uh, first, one of the first blogs we did, which was actually a text blog, we talked about uh, you know, practice and that you know, it's not actually you know, what the old cliche says is perfect. This week, I want to talk about, first of all, what is practice and then how much practice? Because I get asked that question a lot. How long is it going to take me to get this? So let's start with uh, what is practice? Well, first of all, there's two types of practice. There's what is called block practice or skill development practice. And that means, or what that refers to is it's you're working on a very specific aspect of a part, a specific part of the game. So if you're working on you know, your putting, you might be working on putter face control. You might be working on your uh, awareness to control distance. Uh, if you're working on your full swing, it might just be working something as simple as working on your grip. You're working on something very specific, small picture of a big picture. You might be working on your swing plane and doing some drills for your swing plane. But that's skill development, that's block practice. Once you've worked on that skill or that small component, you now are going to try to incorporate it into your golf game or into uh, an environment where you're trying to do, address the second part of practice, and that's what is called transfer or performance practice. And what that simply means is that, let's say, for example, you're working on swing plane, and we've got our swing insurer fabulous tool to help us understand the feeling of the club being on plane, because we have the simple reference of the red and white two-tone. and So people start to work on this real simple environment where they're trying to feel that backswing relationship getting on plane. They might work on the exit or the follow-through relationship and work on that. And now they're starting to get a conditioning in the muscles. They're starting to develop that skill. And now, if they wanted to transfer it to their game environment, they should first try to transfer into a I'd say a consequence environment on the driving range, on the practice area, where you're going to pick some specific targets and you're going to go through some testing to see, can I create this new skill that I've acquired, that I'm trying to acquire, and apply it to a golf ball with some parameters of, su of success and consequence. And then finally, you want to transfer it to the golf course. You want to say, can I Take this feeling, which is a little new, a little different, and I want to keep that word in mind. It's a different feeling. If you think to yourself it's weird or strange or odd or uncomfortable, then your, body will, your brain will suggest to your body, then don't do it. So you always want to keep in mind, if we're working on something that is you know, relevant and important to our improvement, we want to think to ourselves, this is different, this is a different feeling, but I know it's what I should be feeling based on some visual checks or some feedback from a trained eye, professional, et cetera. And now you simply work on, can I take that to the golf course? When you do try it on the golf course, do not try in a tournament environment or in you know, some match with your friends. Try it first in a casual environment. Uh, I'm just going to go out and play at night, you know, a couple balls, see, what I can, see how I can do. Maybe just on a you know, weekend game with the guys, nothing on the line. And if you can have some success there, then you step up and say, well, maybe I'll try to do this uh, in a little weekend game with the guys where we might put a couple bucks in the line, just put a little bit of you know, incentive into it. And then if you're having some success, you now try to put that into uh, you know, a game environment, a tournament environment, competitive environment, whatever you want to call it. We want to try to make sure that we build on our success. We don't try to go too fast too soon. So don't think to yourself, oh, I'm going to try this uh, new feeling in the club championship next Tuesday you may not have too much success with it because your body's not ready to perform because it hasn't learned, hasn't been conditioned yet to feel the sensation uh, successfully enough. So those are the two different types of practice. You know, the block practice skill development, something specific, some little small component of the bigger picture, and then the performance or transfer practice, taking that skill and applying it to your golf swing or to your golf game on the course. So that's first. The second part about practice, practice, practice. I get this question asked to me a lot. So how long is it going to take me to get the feel for this? How long, how, how, how much do I have to practice? What's it going to take? Well, how much do we practice has uh, some variables that we have to address. First, what is your specific athletic ability? Do I make change quickly? Do I have some you know, good hand-eye coordination? I've always been pretty quick to pick things up. That will determine how much you have to practice. That's one definite variable. The second one 
would be, what are my goals? If someone says, well, you know, I play at this level and I want to get to this level, that might be a significant jump. And to do that, not to, not to discourage you that it's going to be really difficult, we just have to understand there's going to be an effort involved, and that is going to determine how much we have to practice. How much, is there, how much difference is there between where we presently are and what our goal happens to be. So that's an important variable. Third, we have to keep in mind, I would refer to this as um, swing conditioning or uh, movement pattern conditioning or habit conditioning. How strong are my present habits? Have I been having this slicing motion with my golf shot for 10 years now? Does my body perform it beautifully, but unfortunately I don't like that shot and now I'm gonna to try to fix it? Well, that's gonna take some time to change that, all right? We have to understand that the body has learned to do something, it's to learn to have a movement pattern, a habit, very often termed as muscle memory, but there's really no such thing. But that's been conditioned, and now it's gonna take some time to change that. I have a client right now who's never picked up a golf club until about six weeks ago. And we started him off real simple with putting, moved him to chipping the ball, and now he's pitching the ball with an ability that looks like someone's been playing golf for a significantly longer time than he has. And I've, people have asked me, you know, how long has this guy been playing? And I explained to them six weeks, and they're astounded. But it's because he's never had to break or change an old habit that wasn't less, was, was less than effective, it's been just building on success. So he's making fantastic progress because he doesn't have to change a habit. And the final variable, if you want to call it that, would be how well do you take instruction? And I'd like to save this until the end because <clears throat> we need to understand when we're getting instruction, if we're trying to work on our golf swing, we have to make sure the instruction is effective. And then we have to understand, do we know what's being explained? Do we understand how to make the movement as opposed to what movement to make? And then what I would strongly suggest is this. Uh, if, you're my, you know, if you're working with me, you would know this, but we want to try to make sure that if at all possible, we have a supervised practice environment. Too often what happens is there's an instruction, information exchange, and now the person is sent, sent off to go practice on their own, and they might do some less than efficient things. So whenever possible, if you can, find a program, find someone who's gonna help you with your golf game, I'll be more than happy to do it if you live near me, to simply spend some time in a supervised practice environment to make sure your practice is effective, and that will reduce the amount of practice that you'll have to do from a time perspective because you'll be getting more efficient practice. So I just wanted to touch on practice today because everyone, you know, always hear that comment, I'm going to the range to practice, and my question is always to those people, really, what are you working on? And very often their answer is, uh, my, my golf swing. Really? What part of your golf swing? We need to make it specific and make it efficient. Hope that helps you. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs>